Hey Robot Makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to learn how to make your own elf detector? Yes, these are elf on the shelf or other products are available. Detector. We're going to do this with some machine learning today and the uh, the use of Veeam. So if this is interested to you, then this is the show for you. So let's get uh, started. Let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get straight to it then. Like this thumbnail, I thought this one came out quite well. So yes, we're going to be using a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think this one is actually a Raspberry Pi 4, but it does work on Raspberry Pi 5 and I think Raspberry Pi 3 as well. Uh, we're going to make an elf detector using Veeam on a Raspberry Pi. So that's what today's show is all about. So we're going to learn how to detect elves uh, by building this machine learning model using these Veeam tools. We're going to have a quick look at how machine learning works, a bit of behind the scenes. Um, if you're to do this manually without something like Veeam, and then we're going to see how easy it is to do this with Veeam. So we're going to have a look at it. Elf detection in action. And if you're here for the live stream, we've also got a few um, mailbox things to show you as well. Got a couple of things to, uh, to show off to you there as well. So stick around for that if you're watching this live as well. So detecting objects with machine learning. So this is a, one of the really cool things you can do with robots. Um, one of the things I always like to um, to build into any of the robots I build, particularly if they've got like a Raspberry Pi uh, built in. And this has a number of steps. There's about seven ish steps. You can probably skip some of these if you uh, just want to get to the results. You're not too bothered about fine tuning and so on. The first step is you need to collect your data. You need to take loads of pictures of whatever it is that you want to detect. Now you can get off the shelf uh, models. Uh, and they work okay in the general case, but sometimes you want to get really specific. In our case, we want to get our elf and we want to be able to detect this specific elf uh, wherever we put it around the seam and have the, have the robot detect it. So we need to take loads and loads of pictures from lots of different angles, different lighting conditions and so on. The next step then is we're going to have to label the images and that involves drawing a little rectangle around where the image, where the object is in the image and we're going to use those images to train our model. The next step then is to is to select what kind of model that we're actually going to use. So you can do object detection, you can do segmentation um, and you can do things like localization. We'll get into a few of those um, in a minute to show you the, the, the differences between them. Then we need to train the model. Now we've done this previously on a different show, we'll get to that in a minute, uh, using a Jetson Nano, which is uh, specifically designed for video and um, computer vision type projects. It's specifically designed for that. Uh, and even on that particular um, uh, system, I think it was about 30 to 45 minutes to train the model. So bear that in mind when we, uh, we try to train our model later on in the live stream. Then you evaluate the model, you'll have a look and see, uh, does it work as well as you expect it to? Do you need to go back and take some more pictures, all that kind of stuff? Um, and that's how you would uh, evaluate the model. Just basically look at some of the statistics that are coming back. Does it detect as well as you would expect? And then you might do some fine tuning. So this, there are some sort of levers and switches within um, uh, machine learning models where you can you can increase the accuracy and dial down some of the uh, false positives uh, but sometimes you then don't get um, it's either very accurately detected or not at all so there's a bit of a slider you can choose there for um, the confidence level and then finally once you've got your model built and you've tested it and you're happy with it you can deploy it so normally that would be taking the the machine learning file put it onto whichever robot you're going to use along with other things like um, you know the, the supporting frameworks that you've used say tensor or uh, keras something like that tensorflow so we're going to use all these different tools today very very briefly but we're going to use them so like I said previously, we have built a machine learning model using the Jetson Nano, which is a, a specific uh, board similar to Raspberry Pi, but has a great big graphics processor on it, which can do all kinds of number crunching very, very fast in real time, which means it's perfect for building models and then for using the models in real time. So we're able to, de to detect, identify and localize types of different robot this was. We trained it on Smars, Auto DIY and a few other robots and it was able to detect them in real time. You can see there that percentage is the confidence level that it's detected it correctly. And it took about 30 to 45 minutes to train that model. So we didn't do that on the live stream. If I remember we did that, I did that offline. And the labeling was a pretty laborious task. So you had to sit there and draw rectangles and then um, export all the the files that support the images, which are basically just an XML file with the coordinates in of each of the objects within the image that you've detected, because you might have more than one image 
uh, one object per image and yeah it's quite a laborious task to then make that build that into something that can then be used um, by a machine learning model lots of manual steps lots of opportunities to get stuff wrong as well and these are the different types of model when I was saying before when evaluating which model that you want to use. So you can do classification, detection or segmentation. So classification is where you identify what it is in an image. So is it a cat or a dog, a tree, that kind of thing. Uh, segmentation essentially draws an outline around the object because it might be that you want to get a really nice outline of the person, just the person, nothing else, so that you can then um, detect if that's um, you know bumping into something, for example. So a pixel by pixel detail uh, around a given object. And then finally today, which is what we're going to be using, which is detection. So it places a bounding box, a rectangle around the specific object that is detected in the scene with the coordinates and also that label of what type, um, what the classification is of that object. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So object detection is a branch of computer vision that deals with localization and identification of an object. So the localization and identif identification are different tasks and we put them together so that we can achieve this single goal of object detection. So localization deals with specifying the location of an object within an image or video stream and identification then deals with assigning that a label or class or description. So you can see there we've got uh, the red rectangle detecting that house there but it's just saying it's a you know x 300 by y 400 and then in the identification stage it's saying i'm pretty sure this is a house i'm 99 percent sure um, so that's the different steps that kind of get combined within our machine learning so yes previously building a machine learning model manually lots of steps pretty complicated to do so we would typically create a label file, we'd collect loads of images, we then label all those images um, with some software. I think I used something that was called Image Labeler, which was like a Python program that somebody had written. And then once we've got them, we produce these annotation files or an XML file for each of the images. So if you've got like a thousand images, you'll have a thousand annotation files as well. Then we need to put them into some kind of folder structure, run that through a training program. Um, and then that will produce something like a mobile net SSD model, which is a type of uh, uh, model. It's designed for like small, uh, small single board computer type things and mobiles. Then we convert it to this open neural network exchange format, this Onyx model, and that's what you can then use to deploy onto your different robots and use it. And if you decide you want to add an extra label, something like that, you can use your existing thing and then retrain it, uh, but essentially you still have to go through and put more images in with the rectangles around them. And then this Pascal VOC is a visual object class. This is a type of folder structure that you need to put all your images and your annotations into. So bundling all together, having the annotations and the images separate set into separate folders. And then, like I said, this image label.py can be used to can be used to produce these annotations. So very, very specific formats you have to do. It's all hand um, crafted if you like but you do get there in the end as we saw when we did this particular demo that's on the screen now so labels.txt contains the types of objects so like the smars quad robot there auto diy the smars smars mini um, and that means that we can then identify within a particular scene which of those robots we have so yeah this is the uh, the demo so we have to take lots and lots of pictures and it's quite intensive. The software, this uh, image labeler um, was some software we used um, on the Jetson Nano. And you can see that I have to sort of move the object. I then have to take the picture, click the button to make it take the picture. I then have to draw a rectangle around it and then say, this is a Smars robot. Go to the drop down, select Smars robot, click add. That would then add that file um, to the, the folder structure. And you can see that you got to take a lot of pictures, you got to draw a lot of rectangles, you got to have lots of different positions near, far away, ideally lots of different lighting things. I use the same area here, so it, you, you have training it on the white background here as well because that isn't changing, so you do want to put your model through different locations as well. So yeah, freeze frame, draw a rectangle bounding box around the object, select the class, unfreeze it, save it, and then repeat that a thousand times. <laughs> so quite a lot involved there. Okay, so if you like what I do and you want to help me uh, grow this channel, please give this video a like. Uh, drop me a comment. Let me know if you built any machine learning models or if you have used any open um, 
open cv type things before uh, and if you've not subscribed to this channel please consider subscribing it means a lot to me helps the grow the channel and uh, helps youtube suggest this to other people as well okay and i do go live every single sunday at seven o'clock gmt uh, so you can join the live stream and have a chat with me after the main part of the show okay so continuing our training and testing process so you can see what this looks like once we've uh, we built our model we can then uh, we can then test it to make sure it's working okay so we load the uh, uh, the data model we then fit the training model with the training data set so what the fitting does is um, essentially takes all the the data that we all those thousand images that we might have captured we might for example take 500 of those and say that's our training set and then the other 500 are our testing set to make sure that when we run our model it works the way we expect because it hasn't seen the testing set before it's a good way of seeing is it detecting these properly we then test the model with the test data we adjust the weights so each one of these um, neurons that we're, we're building has weights and we'll have a look at those and you can actually adjust those weights uh, and then we train again until the results are acceptable so you can see that's the, the flow there of what we're doing. So how this works behind the scenes, um, this we'll just give you this for a bit of background really. So we'll typically take an image with our web camera, our robots camera. Um, that image is made up of lots of red, green and blue pixels, depending on what the resolution of the image is. So it might be 1080p, 100, what, like 1920 by uh, 1080 pixels, so a lot of pixels in all that colour. Often for object detection, we don't need the color at all, and that actually reduces down the amount of processing we need to do. So we typically convert it to grayscale. So we get rid of all the saturation from all the uh, the pixels, so they are just black and white, uh, and grayscale, grayscale values between zero and 255. We often as well reduce down the, um, the size of the image. So we might typically reduce down the resolution to a much smaller size because again, we don't need these whacking great big 4K images in full color. We just actually need a grayscale image uh, that's a lot smaller. So once we've got that uh, converted image, um, we then essentially, that's, that is going to be an array of values. So although it looks like um, a picture to us with our human eye, from a computer point of view, it's just an array of values between zero and 255 in each of the uh, the cells of the array and each of the cells of the array of the array represent different lines of that uh, that image so you can see there and then what we then do um you can see that the, the the image is treated as this array that i've just said the array of pixels each of those is represented by a value between zero and uh, 255 so 255 would be white or purest white zero would be the purest of black and every value in between would be grays so 255 shades of gray and then the model itself so what happens is the training data so remember we said we split our data between some testing data and some training data we feed that training data into our neural network and typically with our neural network we'll see how many different layers there are so how many there's the input layer uh, and you might have um, one neuron for say 10 pixels um, and again it doesn't it, these are things that you can adjust and uh, make more complicated or less complicated the more complicated it is more memory more cpu it will require that the less um, the faster it will be but the less accurate it will be and then you have these hidden layers so you can see they're all interconnected and each one of these connections has a weight value and they're the things that the neural network will actually adjust um, so it'll pass on um, the value as like a yes or no or this is a, a tree or not a tree depending on on the value of these weights and what often will happen in these neural net training programs is they're all assigned random values to begin with and it'll just tweak them randomly until it starts getting a successful value and then it will keep them so it's a bit like a fruit machine it'll just spin the wheels random values will come up and then when it starts getting a result that's um, looking like it's um, using the the testing data set if it's looking like that's correct then it will start to keep some of those values or only adjust them ever so slightly on the next training epoch so we've got the uh, the training data you can see there t1 is the training data t2 is our test data and that's going to correct the outputs and then go back into the training algorithm so quite a complicated piece of math going on behind the scenes so we've got these inputs from the pixels we've got the weights that i said we can adjust or the training algorithm will adjust and then it will output to the connected neurons as well 
So the weight might start out as 0.5, for example. The values are typically values between um, 0 and 1. So they're at floating point numbers. Um, the actual images, which the image pixel values, which are a value between 0 and 255, they also will get crunched down to be a value between 0 and 1 as well. And we call this process normalization. So what we'll do on this one, this, this is how this neuron will work. We get the weight value in 0 0.5. We get each of those cell values, the, uh, the image pixel values that are gray. And we then multiply it by the weight and then we get a result. And then we add all those results together to get a value. And then that's the value that we will then reduce down between a value between zero and one. And there's a function that's called a sigmoid function that will do that reliably. So um, it knows what the, the highest possible value will be and it'll just reduce all of the numbers down so that they're this normalized value. So what we learned from doing this with the Jetson Nano, um, we, we have to make sure that labels.txt file is properly called labels.txt because I think you'll call it label.txt and the whole thing didn't work and I spent many hours trying to figure out why that was. Uh, and then things like the path shouldn't have leading slashes because that means that's the root folder. Uh, you probably want it to be like a relative, which is a, these are Unix path um, conventions and it takes a long time to capture a thousand images so make sure you have that time if you're going to do that and the training epoch the, the training 30 epochs and an epoch is like one go around the uh, the model training cycle and they can take 30 to 45 minutes so it can take quite a while it's not an overnight job but it does take a bit of time if uh, if you're trying to build this and you're trying to get this sort of right so let's compare this now with building with machine and um, the machine learning model with vm so if you've not come across VM before, app.vm.com uh, is an online software as a service that you can use on your robots to do all kinds of things. You can basically build your entire robot system just using VM. So they provided all the tools that we'll need. So all those different seven steps, they've got a tool for each of those within VM and it's very easy to use it. I'm going to use it today live to show you just how easy this is. <laughs> no stress. So it allows us to capture all the image data. So before the show, I actually did capture 262 images there of a elf in various different positions, different lighting, different uh, environment, um, so that I could, when I drew the rectangle, it wasn't getting the same background every single time. And then I labeled each one of those with elf as well. And I'm gonna show you how easy that is to do uh, in a minute. So there's no messy file management, no annotation files, no folder structure. You simply just capture, label, and then train it's as easy as that so we're going to have a go of that in a second once you've then trained your model you get this so you can see the elf model elf data set and uh, it i think the file size there is 18 meg so it's not a massive file and it's produced that labels.txt file for us and the elf.model.tf light is a tensorflow light um, formatted file so it works with tensorflow so VM can train all this. They can do that in the cloud as well. So we're not even using our own CPU to do this. So it's ideal for running on something like a Raspberry Pi. So at this point, I want to give a, a nice shout out to our sponsor who've given me a amazing gift package. Let me just grab this. <laughs> this is one of the, uh, the this, look how big this is. This is my head compared to this. Let me show you like a regular size like soda can <laughs> compared to this. Absolutely gigantic. Uh, so yes, PCB Way. Let me just uh, play their message. This video is sponsored by PCB Way, your ultimate destination for all things PCB manufacturing and assembly. Whether you're a hobbyist, a startup, or a seasoned professional, PCB Way has got you covered. PCB Way offers an impressive range of services. They provide high-quality, custom-designed printed circuit boards for any application you can imagine. From single-layer to multi-layer, flexible and even rigid flex PCBs, they have the expertise to bring your designs to life. PCB Way ensures fast turnaround times and affordable prices without compromising on quality. With their state-of-the-art facilities and advanced manufacturing techniques, they can handle small prototype orders up to large-scale production runs with equal precision and efficiency. PCB Way offers additional value-added services such as PCB assembly, component sourcing, and even functional testing. You can trust them to deliver the fully assembled and tested boards ready for integration into your projects. One of the best parts of PCBWay is their user-friendly online platform. It allows you to easily upload your designs, get instant quotes, and track the progress of your orders in real time. Plus, their dedicated customer support team are ready
ready to assist you with any questions or concerns. So whether you're working on an innovative Internet of Things device, a robotics project, or anything in between, PCBWay is your go-to partner for reliable and affordable PCB manufacturing and assembly. Head over to PCBWay.com today and turn your ideas into reality. With PCBWay, your trusted PCB manufacturing and assembly partner. So once again, thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Got my uh, PCBWay Christmas lanyard on, and I've also got my PCBWay uh, little <laughs> label on there as well, just for today's show. Cool. All right, so let's get on to the, the next slide, which I think is demo time. Right, this is really cool. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get my uh, workspace sorted out here. Uh, what I'm going to do is show you a couple of things. So the first thing I'm going to show you is uh, the robot. So I have a VM robot on my desk here. Let me just move these uh, nice PCB way Christmas decorations off for a second. So this robot is called the Rover robot. You can see it's got a web camera there. So it's some nice chunky DC motors there. Um, on the back, uh, you can see it's got a nice on off button and you can see the Raspberry Pi 4 just in the background there. Now inside there as well, there is a uh, an IMU so it can detect um, motion, it can detect you know what orientation that the uh, the robot is in and I think there is also um, just a little power power drop down converter thing so you can put some 18650 batteries in there as well. So nice quality robot, it's got a bit of suspension on it as well so it can uh, go over different uh, terrain. If I just move it up there you can see the wheels are kind of got a bit of give on them. Okay, so this is the VM robot that we're going to be using today. So if I go over to uh, my web my web browser, let me just get everything sorted here. So if I go over to my web browser here, um, I've actually got this robot already set up. I'm actually going to show you how to set up the robot as well because it's really quick and easy to do. And what we can also do on here, we have a camera. We can switch on the camera. We can see that this is a live feed there's our little little elf that we're going to be detecting shortly and we've also got these keyboard controls so if i enable the keyboard control and i just press the uh, the backwards button and i've got the full power on there i'll just do that full power i can make the robot back up i can make it move left and right if i go to the overhead view there you can see what that looks like and also what that looks like so it's pretty quick as I'm pressing these buttons. So what we're going to do, we're going to build an extra um, an extra um, service that appears over here that will detect our, mm, our elf. I don't know that one. Right. So let me just get to my notes. The other thing I want to show you today as well, let me just go back over here, is if you go to kezrobots.com, uh, let me just load this up. And you go to the latest article on here, which is the uh, latest blog. You'll find there an article about how to train. Basically, what we're going to—I'm going to be using this as my instructions in today's show, basically. So this is my write-up of how to train the model to detect the uh, the elf. So the first thing we want to do is we want a robot. Now it doesn't have to be a VM robot. You can run the VM software on any robot that um, that. Well, let, let's have a see how easy this is to do. So if I go over to um, app.vm.com. So I've already created an account. I am logged in. You can actually try a robot out by just clicking try VM and you'll connect to the VM headquarters robot. They have a rover robot that you can actually live uh, control. So that's quite fun. And to, cre to create a new robot, we simply give it a name. So I could call this one live demo two or three, whatever. Add the robot in there. And what we will then get is a, a, a supported platform. So you can see that we've got Mac, we have um, Linux, and we have like the, this is the 32-bit version of the Raspberry Pi, for example, and this is the 64-bit version. And we simply just copy uh, whatever that key is there, paste that into a terminal, um, copy the download in VM server, paste that into a terminal, and then just wait for that to connect. So I think I do have, um, let me see if I've got that one there. Let me just close that out. So we can just see this one terminal here. So if I just zoom in a bit on this so we can see it. There we go. So this is um, a Raspberry Pi. Let's see what this actually is. I think this is a Raspberry Pi 4 or 5. This is a oh, Raspberry Pi 3. So 
there we go so it'll even work on one of these so yes what we could do we could basically just copy and paste um, into that um, and I think I've actually already done that if I do a PS AUX and then grep the word VM what that command will do is it will just tell me if there's actually a VM server running and it, it is actually running because I've already cut and paste those onto um, onto this particular robot so if I go back over to I think a live demo that's the actual robot uh, there we go so yes once that's uh, running we can then do things like add components to the robot so in the in the uh, the training instructions that I've created there the how to set up VM you can see that we've got the rover robot we've got the instructions on how to create the robot now I did previously on my account have all these other robots set up but literally minutes before I was going live I tried to log in and all of them have disappeared so I'm not sure what's going on there but it won't stop us from doing what we're doing today it just means I can't access that previously built model uh, and show you that one that's working so we'll have to do everything live and make sure that that's uh, that's working okay so yes once we've installed we've we've got the VM app installed on our Raspberry Pi the service is running um, and we'll get a little message at the bottom that says connecting to your robot so if I go back to um, this one here and I go to the setup program you'll see at the bottom there it says your robot is connected so the service is running on the Raspberry Pi it's connecting over the internet to the VM um, the VM cloud service and that means that we can then control this remotely and add things to it so once we've got the robot set up the next thing to do is to configure it so we want to build a couple of different things into our robot so the first thing we want to do is we want to tell it what kind of board we're using so we're using a raspberry pi board so the way that we would do that we'll click on the create component we click on board and then we we find the pi and we basically just give our component a name so one of the gotchas on here is don't use spaces in the names it won't give you an error message on here but it will in the log files basically it's just saying that this isn't a valid name so just give it a name like pi something like that and create it so here's one I created earlier which is on the the rover robot rover robot so we get these things on here attributes data capture frames and depends on you'll see these repeated on every component that we add in uh, so the attributes is anything specific to that component that we want to configure data capture is if we want to capture some sensor readings or images which is what we'll do in a minute on our camera we can tell it how to capture them where to put them the frame is about the frame of reference so if you think about your robot uh, it'll have some physical dimensions like how wide are the wheels how what's the circumference of the wheels um, as well as what pinouts um, are driving them from a, a board perspective so that's what the frame does is it tells it where in 3d space each of these components live and then depends on is really just to do with the order that the services are brought up so that um, you make sure you bring up the board one first for example um, and then all the ones subsequently after that now on this robot we've got some motors so we've added a right motor which is controlled by gpio so you can see there it's connected to our local board which is our raspberry pi this one does have encoders so um, it's gotten very accurate and you can see there the right encoder um, has this ticks per rotation uh, and then you can see the type of um, pin assignment so do you have like an enabling pin what how, how is the direction um, controlled so if it's got an a b these are particularly on this raspberry pi i'm using pin 16 and pin 18 and then the pulse width modulation basically tells it how fast to spin those motors so pin 22 is connected for that um, and you can see that that depends on the right encoder and the local we've got the left uh, motor there as well um, and then we've got the base so the base is the thing that connects all the motors together to the robot so we've got the right motor and the left motor so the right component and the left component above the wheel circumference we use that to figure out how far the motor has traveled if it does one entire rotation using our encoders we can then work out what the distance traveled will be and then the width is just how far apart those wheels are so when it's moving them um, sort of turning left and right it can figure that out too and you can see there again that depends on left and right and the local next up we have the camera so interesting this robot although it does have a raspberry pi it's using a regular webcam a usb web camera so if i look on the 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 raspberry pi there you can see that there's a cable connecting this web camera here to the the robot 
And the reason that we do that is it's actually simpler because they keep changing the standards on Raspberry Pi for how you control a camera. So the, the camera, um, the CSI camera as they call it, which uses that little cable uh, and the Raspberry Pi camera module, you can actually use them, but it is a bit fiddly. So going with a web camera just takes away any of those issues. It just works out the box. So the video path for USB cameras, for the first video camera if you've just got one, will be video zero. So you can see the little drop down there and it basically just says general web camera or video path zero. Uh, and that's it for that particular set of settings. We then got the uh, right encoder and we have the left encoder. And these are just used to, um, uh, to calculate how many times the wheels have spun round. We then got the IMU. So there's um, an I squared C um, um, board. I think it's one of those very cheap um, um, accelerometers, gyroscopes. I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but it, it's probably the, the cheapest one that you can buy. You'll know if you saw it. Um, and again, that's just got a couple of attributes there. So I squared C bus one and then use alternate I squared C but address is false, just in case you have more than one of them. And that's it. That's all that out we have for configuration on our robot. So what we want to do next is we want to set up um, a data capture service. So it will capture images from our robot and then send them, sync them up to the, uh, the cloud. So we're going to click on this services tab. We're going to create a service and we're going to create a data management service. And we're just going to call this one, let's see, I think we simply just call like um, data management. Let's just call it data manage, data elf, something like that. Okay. And what we've got on the, the uh, attributes for this, so capturing is enabled. The directory, this is where it's going to store all the data that it captures. So this just means storing our home directory in the .vm capture folder. Uh, and then syncing means that it will start syncing right away. As soon as I save this, it'll start syncing any images from the robot up to the VM cloud. Uh, we've not added any extra, oh, there you go. Interval is like um, 0.1 times a minute. So um, what's that? Every tenth of a minute, it will upload a new image. So if I save that configuration now, um, that's how often it's going to synchronize. So now that we need, we've 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 got that data capture, the data elf, um, we can go back to our components. We can find our camera, and then what we can then do is add a data capture configuration. So we're going to do a read image. So it's going to read an image from the camera, and we can say how often it's going to read that image. So 0.3 seems to be the, the one to do. I'm going to leave it as um, the MIME type. This is a multimedia extension type as image JPEG. There's a toggle on off there because we don't constantly want to be capturing images, but we do want to be doing that quite intensively just as we want to capture a couple of ELF images. So I'm going to do save configuration. And if we now go back up to the top on here, um, we look on the log file, we'll see if there's any errors or anything, any problems with that. Uh, so what's that robot server external that looks like that's from quite a while ago so I'm not going to worry about that so that's fine okay so I think we are ready to start capturing some images from our robot so I'm going to go back down here to that live feed so what I'm going to do is basically just position this robot uh, and, and basically have it take some pictures of this elf in various different locations and also being slightly obscured and things like that so while that's happening, if we go over to our data tab up here and we go to images, you can see these are the images now that it started to capture. So um, let me capture some images from the back of the, uh, let's go back to our fleet, go back to our, our rover and then back to our control and then the camera. Let's go back over there just so we can see what the robot sees. So there's his, uh, his back, uh, that's what he looks like from there. Maybe I'll have one of him sort of sat on top of here, just his legs, maybe upside down, something like that. Maybe from the side. So these are, ideally we would, we would put this in lots of different locations and from lots of different angles. I'm just gonna move the robot back a bit as well. Let's just do that. A bit more space there there we go so we can put the elf in various different locations there right so we've probably got enough to be going on with now um, image collection wise so let's go back to our config let's go down to the camera and let's just disable that capture 
and then save the configuration. So we've stopped collecting images now. We've got a couple to be getting on with. So let's go back up to our, our data up here. And let's see what images we've collected. 33 images. That's probably enough to be getting on with for now. So if I click on this first image, you'll see this little thing opens up here on the right hand side. Let's just see if I can move this um, just so that I'm not obscuring it. And we've got actions, details, tags and labels. Uh, and the mode we want to select is called bounding box. So bounding box is what we want to configure. And then the current label, I want to call this elf. And I want to create a data set that's called elf data set. Let's create that as well. And then that's selected. So now what I want to do is just draw a rectangle around anywhere where that elf appears. Now it doesn't matter if I don't get it completely accurately here because we're going to we're going to do this a number of different times for the different elves. So that's all I need to do. I don't, I don't need to click save or anything like that. I can just move to the next image. I can then click on the uh, label, select the recently used one, just draw that rectangle around it again, make sure it's added to that elf data set, move to the next one, uh, create that tag again. Let's just do it around that bit there, for example. Add that to the elf data set. And I'm going to skip across those two there. Let's now go to this one. Again, elf and elf data set. And let's just draw a rectangle around that one as well. There we go. So we need to do this a number of times so we've got enough images of our, our elf so that the machine learning model can detect it from all different angles. So let's just do that one there. So it should be picking up the kind of shape of the uh, and the, the lightness and darkness and things like the stripes of the elf on there as well. Let's do that one where he's just uh, peeping his head there. So sorry if this is boring. I did actually create a model previously, but I, I do seem to have lost access to that. Uh, I'm not sure what the reason for that was, but um, once I've got that back, I should be able to carry on with my, <laughs> my elf. Um, my elf journey there we go so i'm just going to do that it doesn't matter if we we miss off bits there we could include absolutely everything so that the bounding box completely encloses every pixel of the elf if we want to it's going to start to detect this leg as part of the elf as well the camera leg that's uh, that's just part of it right let's do another one down here and then i think we'll we'll call it quits at that now really you want you want a good 100 pictures, I would say, to accurately capture and detect your your elf. So let's just see if there's a, let's just do that last one there. And let's just do elf. Draw our rectangle. And then add it to the data set. Right, so now that we've done that, we now go over to our data sets. We can see that we have this elf data set and there's the images that we've captured. So we captured 10 images. It's not enough really, uh, but let's see how well we uh, we can work with this. And we can actually just train the model straight from here. And again, we can, we can select which type of model we want to use. So is it a single classification? Is it a multiple label classification or is it an object detection? So we're gonna select object detection. We're gonna select the elf labels which is what we uh, we've detected we could have done more than one uh, label if we wanted to we'll call this one elf model and then let's train the model so what's happening now is it's going to start training it and it probably takes it about five minutes to produce that model so while it does that we're going to have just a quick look at some other things and then come back to this like i said i did actually have one set up for you previously but unfortunately uh, that one is not, not actually available at the moment so while it's doing that, we can go away. We can leave it doing that in the background. It's actually running in the VM cloud. So it's not running that training model on our Raspberry Pi. Uh, and that means we've got all that power still of the Raspberry Pi uh, available to us. So if I actually connect to this, this is the Raspberry Pi, um, the Rover. So if I just run something like HTOP, we can have a C, uh, yeah, it's basically not doing very much at the moment. I can see all the CPUs, all the cores basically, zero to ten percent they're not doing very much and it's not using very much memory it's got eight gigs of memory this particular board and it's not doing very much with that as well but you can see there that we have the mount vm uh, which is the way it's connected it's syncing up uh, to the uh, to the cloud there mm -hmm. um, so yeah this is a standard raspberry pi we just installed that uh, vm app on it ran the configuration and then when we went to um, our fleet, we can see the list of robots that we've currently got set up on here. 
and we can see there that Rover, which is the one that we're using, is live. So there we go, it's a Raspberry Pi, there's my local IP address, which is what I was just using on that uh, VNC session to connect to it remotely. I can see it's running version 15.1 of the VM server software, and we can see we've got all these different tabs across the top. So histories, every time you click save, it will, it will save a snapshot of the, the entire configuration of your robot. So you can always roll back if you make a mistake. You can basically just click on that load config and it will wipe over. So it's got like version control of all the configuration, which is pretty cool. There's this log file so you can see all the issues that it came up against. Uh, and you can, you can basically look at that live if there's live issues happening. And then the control tab is how we can control our robot. So you saw before... Uh, we can just enable the uh, WASD keys. We've got this speed controller for our robot, and then we can switch on this live camera. Right, so what we're going to do, and we can see the other, other settings. They've got their left encoder, the right encoder, the accelerometer. There's the current value. So if I give this a bit of a shake, you can see those values change dramatically there, and then they sort of settle back down again. And the left motor, the right motor, you can see them as well. We've also got a replication of the, the live camera module there as well. Now we're not doing anything with the uh, cloud point clouds, so there's no data there if I click on that. Uh, it hasn't got any data. We're not capturing that from anywhere. Okay, so that's that's um, what we have. What we want to do next is create a new um, couple of components that are going to use that training model, that trained machine learning model, and then overlay it by transforming this image here running that, that through the model and then drawing the rectangles around it to show that it's detected the elf. So let's go back over to our configuration. Let me just grab my uh, instructions on how to do this. And let's, let's set this up. So let's go over to our config and services tab. So we've got our data elf there. So next up we want to create a machine learning model service. So we go to ML model. We want to use the TF Lite CPU. So this is just using the, the main CPU. It's not got any kind of GPU to accelerate it. And TF Lite is the TensorFlow Lite uh, library. So we'll call this one um, ELF model TF Lite, something like that. Okay, we're gonna save that configuration. And you can see now we've got some We've got some options on here so what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to the other data tab and see if it's finished training the model yet so if we go to models so it's still training it it's taking it four minutes i think it takes just over five minutes to to do the training so we'll, we'll carry on with uh, with what we're doing uh, but we can see there that the model is called elf model so let's go back over to our configuration where we're going to this is how we use the model so we're going to say deploy model on robot and we can select the, the model once it's been created. We'll be able to click on that drop down and see the ELF model available to us. And then you can select how many CPU threads you want to run this on. If you don't specify anything, I think it just runs um, the default number. Um, so, so yeah, we are just waiting on that. Oh no, it's got a problem. Internal error while training, that's no good. So VM, what's going on there, guys? <laughs> We don't want to see errors like that when we're doing a live stream. So what I'll need to do is basically rerun that again. So let's go back up to our data sets. Let's go back in here and then train the model one more time. Uh, that'll be really frustrating if we actually can't get that to run. So elf model. Elf ML model. There we go. Let's train that one more time. Shucks, that's not great. Okay, let's go back over to our robot there. So I'm just going to save that configuration even though I've not specified. But now what's going on in the background then? So in the VM cloud, they're training this model and they're going to call that whatever the name I've given it, so the ELF ML model. And then we can either manually copy a file that we've created. So that Jetson Nano, Nano model, I could actually upload that to this Raspberry Pi within VM and give it the path to that model and any optional settings. Or, and this is where I think VM really sort of shines through, we can just deploy the model onto the robot. So we can say that ELF model that we've just created, deploy that onto this robot or enter any other robots. So we can kind of build it once and use it multiple times. Uh, so let's see if that's still going. Yep, so we've got 50, 50 seconds through on there. So let me see what we need to do next. 
Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to go over to back onto our configuration. So we'll leave that running. We need to add another component on here. And this is going to be a, another camera component, but this time it's going to be, instead of it being like a web camera, it's going to be a transform. So let's call this one cam um, transform, something like that. Okay, so let's scroll down to find our cam transform component. I think it adds them all to the bottom of the... There we go, cam transform. So these settings on here, we need to fill this with some information. So if I go back up to the, the Kev's robot, how to do this instructions, there is some nice JSON that you can copy and paste. Uh, there we go. So let's just copy that. Let's go back over to our, and basically we can just overwrite all of this with that new configuration. So what's going on here? So the pipeline is, if it is like a pipeline, as in we're going to do some operations in a sequence. And the operations that we're going to do, we're going to take our machine learning elf detector um, model. I think I've called it elf detector on here. We can change that name to be the, the right one in a minute. And then that confidence level, 0 0.5, is the slider so that we can dial out false positives but it's good just to start with the 0 0.5 to begin with we might dial it up to like 0 0.7 or something like that later on and the source of the images that we're going to be uh, processing is the camera module so whatever we call the camera up here which i think is just cam so if i just save that configuration it might complain now in the in the log file that elf detector isn't detected yet so elf detector i think is the name of the service that we were halfway through creating so if I go back on here I go down to here so I think elf detector is what so elf model tf light is what I've actually called it so if I just grab that copy that go back over to our uh, components scroll all the way to the bottom and then just edit that so I think that is correct and then save that configuration so if I scroll to the top and just have a look in those log files, you'll see if there's any error messages. And yeah, it couldn't find the uh, the model that we were looking for, the ELF model one. But um, once we've got that built, it should be okay. So I'm trying to show you how easy this is to do, and then it's failing. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back to the uh, um, to the to all the data. I'm just going to add in a couple of extra ones. It might just be that there isn't enough data for it to, to train there. So let's just add in an extra couple on here. So let's just do elf. Oops. Let's add this to our data set. And then let's just do the bounding box. Actually, they did that on the wrong one then, did not Let's just get rid of that elf. I thought that looked a bit weird. Let's go back to bounding box. We want to select our elf. We want to add that to our elf data set, which we have. And then we wanted to draw the rectangle around him like so that's all of him let's have a look if there's any other ones there's just his legs so let's do that one as well so let's just draw that around there so i guess this isn't really like fun <laughs> viewing but uh, it's just necessary for us to uh, to get this to work hopefully so let's go back to here let's go to elf Let's go to elf data set and then let's just do that bounding box just there. Okay, so that's now added to that data set. If we go back to our data sets, let's have a look at that there. Yeah, we've got 13 images now. Um, and let's click on that train model. Let's do object detection. Let's call this one uh, elf model. Letters, numbers, and hyphens on it. Well, that should be okay. Train model. So that failed after 2 minutes 55. I don't know if there's anything going on at the moment in VM that could be causing this kind of issue. Um, if anybody from VM is actually watching, that will be helpful to, to understand that. Let me see if uh, there's anybody on there from VM. They do know this show is happening today, so I was hoping that they would join to help support any sort of techie issues like that. Because uh, a lot of these components are kind of work in progress. <laughs> So let's go back, uh, let's see what the next step would be after that. Um, I think that is everything actually. 
So we need this model to work successfully. So what I was saying before, um, it's okay for me to sort of navigate away from this once uh, that's working. Uh, if I go back to fleet, I did have all kinds of other robots that I, I had available. You can see there's only three there. If I go back to that uh, instructions and you can see on the screenshot, uh, I had quite a few set up already. Let's see if I can find them. There we go. So I had QB and Duckface, which is a Bubo, and Roberta was the name of the Rover robot. And then there's a couple of other ones that I basically just tried um, to get this to work on. So some of the, the lessons learned I've got from VM so far is the Raspberry Pi web camera is a bit hit and miss at the moment. I know that they are working on that and it's because there is several different versions of the web camera and they have to have a driver for each of those. Uh, so the, the original web, the original Raspberry Pi web camera, uh, which is like version 1 and 1 1.2, they use a particular type of sensor uh, and that exposes itself in the, the Unix file system and you have to have a driver that can understand that format. And then the new modules that they have, the version 3 modules, completely different driver set, uh, so they would have to update that. So I know it's on their roadmap to do that, but it isn't there just yet. Um, and I haven't tried it with the older web camera to see if that will work. So let's see how that's getting on. If this doesn't go on, we'll just have to call this one quits, I think, today. And come back to it on another show. Let's see if uh, that model is going okay or not. So it's still training. It's two minutes in. Okay, so let's go back to our... We'll come back to this um, just in a minute. I just need to let it do the training session. So if you haven't already taken a look at kevsrobots.com, there's so many different things on there for you to, to enjoy and to learn. So the learning um, platform is completely free. There's no sign up required, no logins or anything like that. You can basically just access the free courses and get working, get learning straight away. So if you look at the top of the screen there, we've got this free courses. Click on there and there's a whole bunch of them. So if I go over to kevsrobots, I go up to the very top there, free courses. Uh, you can see there we've got all kinds of courses like pandas that was one that uh, we we're looking at not so long ago computer vision with cv zone we've got things like learning how to program a smars robot how to design robots in fusion 360 python for beginners databases and then i've got these learning pathways so rather than just giving you individual courses uh, if you want to learn python for example there's a number of different python courses that you can take in a particular order that makes sense uh, built from the courses. Uh, so the first one is Python for Beginners, learning MicroPython, the basics, and then my Raspberry Pi Pico with MicroPython and GPIO Mastery. Then we've got the Computer Vision one, and then we have the Pandas for data manipulation. So if I click on the Python for Beginners one, for example, you can see there you've got a you know, nice little percentage. You get all the different um, lessons down the left-hand side, so you can just jump straight into them, and it will talk you through uh, each of the different things with examples of code and you can just next when you go to the next the next page it gives you an idea as well as how long that will take to read which is about three minutes in that case okay so let's see what's going on that's still training four minutes in i'd be interested to know what the error message was on that because we're actually not getting any uh, messages back just an internal error which isn't particularly helpful uh so yeah that's just one of those things. We'll, we'll come back to that again. Just keep an eye on that to see how that's going. Because I want to show you the detecting of the, uh, the the elf. That's what it's all about. We do have merch as well on the store. So if you go to casualrobots.com slash merch, you can get yourself a nice t-shirt. You can get the, the Robot Maker hats, the Robot Maker mugs, the Kev Robots mugs, which are really nice. And we also have um, um, some t-shirts and hoodies as well, which is pretty cool. Okay, so that's uh, our merch. And you can also join me on Discord. There's all kinds of uh, people on Discord. It's a really growing community. I think it's over two or three hundred now. Uh, I've not been on for a while myself uh, to look at that. Um, but yeah, there's uh, if you have a problem, if there's something on any of the code that I've written that you have problems with, that's the place to basically get some support and help on that. So go to kedgerobots.com slash Discord and you can get a sign-up link from there. It just takes a couple of minutes to come through onto your email when you sign up for that, but it's completely free. Oops. <laughs> Wrong button there. Okay, so that's our Discord. 
and you can follow me on social media as well. So I do post on all different places on social media. So I'm on uh, Threads, which I think is uh, growing in uh, popularity. Uh, so I'm at Kevin McAleer at Threads.net on there. I'm also on TikTok at Kevin McAleer uh, six. I'm on uh, Instagram at Kevin McAleer. I'm on X at Kev's Mac. I'm on Mastodon at Kev's Mac at Mastodon.social. And I'm also on Blue Sky at Kev's Mac uh, dot Blue Sky dot social as well. So let's see if we have that model trained yet. It's still training there five minutes in. That's done better than that previously. Hopefully we'll get there with this one this time. Uh, it's not like watching paint dry this. There's not a lot we can do until it's finished uh, training the model. But what I will say is when it works, it works a lot quicker than training, for example, on our Jetson Nano, which took 30 to 45 minutes. This one took just over five minutes when I did this one last time. Uh, but it does depend on what's happening on their cloud service. You're completely dependent on that. That's just part of the system. So what I want to do as well is just show you the billing of this because um, I've not incurred any costs by doing this so far. You can see that is zero, zero, zero. Uh, so we do have cloud storage. So when I've synchronized those images up to the cloud, uh, they incur a really fractional small amount of cost. Uh, and you do get so many, you get $5 credits applied each month. So as long as you're beneath that $5, you'll never actually incur any costs. So the cloud data upload, the data ingress, which is basically coming back out, uh, remotely controlling it and the standard compute. So I'll probably incur a very, very small amount for doing this, uh, building the, the machine learning model, but hopefully not for the ones that fail because that wouldn't be very fair. Okay, let's go back to our model and see how that's going along. Please say finished. Let's see, that's not it. Model. Aha, so is that it? I think it's finished. There we go. So we've got a, an elf data set down there. Right, let's go back to our, our robot. Let's go back to our configuration. And um, is it the services tab we need? Yes, so this deploy on robot, we can get our elf model three. We can save that. And that's going to push that model now down to our robot. Uh, it's 18 meg, was it? I can't remember the size of that. Let's go back and see how big that was. Yes, about 18 meg. So it's not massive. Um, now, if we go back over to here, we might be able to see that file come through. So it can see that there's been some changes detected. So it's just starting the synchronization. Um, and essentially, that model will appear um, on our robot as if by magic. So now we can go back over to that transform now that we've set up our service correctly. Let's go back down here, camera transform. Uh, that looks like that's correct. So if we go back up to our control, let's see if we've now got, yes, we've now got the camera transform available. Now what should happen there is we should get another box appearing underneath here once it has done that synchronization of the 18 meg file. So we might be able to see that come through. See, my bandwidth is taking a bit of a hit on the, uh, the little screen I've got next to me that shows me all the... Uh, and that's now finished, so I'm guessing that that means this is probably synchronized. So let's just give that a bit of a refresh. Let's do our cam and our cam transform. And the camera transform basically looks exactly like the regular um, camera. Uh, it does look like it's a slightly slower frame rate. Um, and that's because it's doing all that processing on the Raspberry Pi because uh, it can't do that transform stuff in the cloud. It does do it on the Edge device. So let's go and have a look and see if we can see that coming through. So it mustn't have deployed the model just yet for that to come through. I'm just going to check the error log to make sure there's nothing going on there. All ah, right, so it can't find elf model TF, tide, TF light not found. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back to my instructions and make sure I've got this set up correctly. So we've got the model trained. We've deployed the model. And then we are configuring the service. So elf detector. And that's the name of the TF Lite service. Let me just make sure we've got everything named correctly on here. So this is called Elf Model TF Lite. 
and then on our component we should have on the transform the same name elf model tf light so is that the model name let me just make sure that's the elf model elf ml model was it let's just get that open so it's called elf model 3 i think that's actually the name that should be in here elf model 3 save that config let's go back up and see if there's any errors on our log that looks better okay let's go back to our control so close let's go to our transform uh, i think it's at that point where the error appears if you've not got it set up right so it can't find elf model 3 so i don't know if that's because it just hasn't downloaded it yet um, and maybe we can find that out by actually going into the robot, into the file system. And if we go to dot vm, uh, what was the name of the file? So where are we? We're in Kev. So I think it said it was in dot vm, was it? Um, or was it? root and then vm so it's not that one uh, okay we're so close to making this work let me just have a look at the log files it's still saying that the elf model 3 is not found elf model 3 <laughs> somebody's saying we need a <laughs> what is adam talking about there <laughs> right um, we're so close this is ridiculous right let me just make sure we've got that model set up correctly sorry i'm whizzing about on here so elf model 3 is the detector name so i've not missed out a step i'm just going to go over to vm on this page um let's have a look and see let's make sure we've deployed that correctly then onto our robot so let's go back over to um, the service so config and then services. So deploy model health model three. Yep, that looks correct. And let's go back up to control. Let's check our log file. Now we're getting me to source detector cannot find vision service vision service right so is that the is that the camera control the transformer so what i'm going to do i'm going to check the documentation so let's go over to docs now they've got some good examples on here of things like how to set up the machine learning so let's go to deploy model let's have a quick look through so yep all oh, that looks good We've deployed the model so click on the ml model then going to add in ml model that look fine so let's go back down to our transform i'm sure that's all we needed to do detector name so let's go back to here Oop, I don't think it was any of those I think it might have been on the services tab and let's just have a look and see if there's a no, so it's not data management and it's, we've already done that Oh, that's so frustrating because we're so close. I wonder if it's just the naming of this then. So if I call this Elf Detector, save that. 
Update save. But I think all that's doing is just deploying the model. So let's have a look up on the, uh, the thing there. And then once that's updated, we can then check to see on the transformer, is that called Elf Detector? Save that. I might have to like remove and then add these back in if it's not working properly. And is the name of the camera correct? So camera is cam. And that is called cam there as well. Yep. Okay. And then let's go back to control. Camera and camera transform. Darn it. Elfish detector. It's as if I'm missing one service. That's all I think is missing from there. Oh, I wanted this to be so slick as well. It's because the uh, the the ones I'd previously set up that I was just going to show you if I had any issues. I've not got access to them, so I'm going to have to just troubleshoot this one until we've figured it out. Um, so let me go back up and see what we've done wrong. What I might do is just remove some of the um, the things that are not working right. All oh, right, so that's the model. So what if that needs to be the elf detector one? So let's just call that one elf model update save. So that's called elf model. Let's go to our component down to our transform and call that one elf model. Save that. Go back to our log files. Okay, let's go to our control. Check our log files. Oh. Elf model not found. So another thing we can try is basically just restarting all the services and just seeing if that makes things work, turn it off and on again. Sometimes these things just need a, a quick sync to get everything back up and running again. Uh, so by clicking that restart button, you'll just see there all the error messages and so on will basically just pause for a moment and then uh, continue after that. Okay, and then let's see if we can get this just to work. It'd be so nice if it just works. Let's go back to our robots and you'll see the status of it. It'll come back online um, in a second. So it's quite nice that they have this sort of page that shows you all your different robots. You can even specify different locations. You can say this one is like in the summer house that's uh, moving around spotting um, burglars or <laughs> whatever. So you could do that by just basically specifying different locations there. I'm interested in the slam. So there's lots of um, um, advanced stuff that you would normally see on ROS available in VM. And VM does play nicely with ROS as well. So let's go back over to our rover. Let's see if it's now booted back up. Yep, live. Let's check our logs. Is it complaining about that? Not yet, which is interesting. Let's go and switch on our camera and our transform. Yeah, the fact that that's not immediately there tells me that there's still a problem with that finding that model. So service vision elf model. So I wonder if I've just not configured one of these correctly. I'm, I'm guessing it's that transform so detector name. So let's go back to our detector name. Let's see if we can find that. So computer vision detection. So let's see an example of that. So it does suggest that there's like a service missing. I'm pretty sure I include everything in the instructions on everything we needed on here. So let's go to, is it vision, a service? Yep, that's the one. That's what we're missing. So elf, um, Detector Kev, we'll call it. Oop, did that disappear then? Let's just do that again. So, vision, ML model, create, save. Right, let's go back to our component. Let's scroll down to transform and then let's give it that name in there. Hopefully, this will be it. 
<laughs> Here we go. Right. Control. Camera. Transform. Is the transform going to appear? Do I need to give it another kick? Let's check the logs. So, elf model TF not available. So, why is it trying to detect that? Have I not saved something somewhere? Elf model TF light is not the name that we gave it. We gave this one elf model Kev, wasn't it? that one more time okay, Kev detector so is it in this the service what's going on there all right select the model Dope. right I'll write up all these little uh, bits that we were clearly missing from the instructions um, and then once it's working, we should be able to get to the bottom of that. So elf model Kev not found. That's the source detector. Cannot find elf model Kev. So let's see what's going on there. Detector name. Pretty sure that was the elf. That was the name of that service that we've just created. It might take it a second or two, basically, just to sync up that configuration. Every time I click save on here, I'm actually editing the, the web service, and then it has to push that out to the robot itself. So sometimes it can just take a little, little moment for that to happen. So Elf Detector is the name of the model, which is getting from the drop down. so I'm assuming that's right. If we go to the, sort of the components, let's check the, the detector name. It's Elf Model Kev. Just try it and check on there again, just in case it's caught up. We should I get a second window when it's working? I think it still says it can't find that elf model Kev. Elf model Kev. Like that. I don't know if I've given it two things the same name there. It'll tell me if I have. Let's try running the... <laughs> so close. So close. Can't find the vision service. This resource not initialized yet. Ah, right. There we go. It has now, it's now initialized. That's looking better. Let's try that. There we go, right, so we've got that second thing working now. So if I move this robot back up, this uh, elf over here, this down here should now detect the elf if we've trained it with enough images. <laughs> now the thing was, I did cheat by only putting, was it 10 images in? Which is like nowhere near enough, you need a good 100 or so. Uh, but once that is detecting, you'll see it'll draw a bounding box around it and it will say elf. <laughs> So Man Alive, that was a bit complicated. I'll go through the settings again just so that we can see what we need to do to set this up. Uh, and then maybe we need to go back in and add some extra images to get it to draw that bounding box. But the fact it's doing the transform means that all the gubbins are wired up correctly. Right, so let's go back in and see what we've got. So component-wise, on our camera, uh, we had, which is just... Scroll past it then, didn't I? We added in a data capture, and we only enable that to capture some Im images to build our model with. We don't need that on all the time, so that's currently off. Um, we then added in um, another camera thing, which is called a camera transformer component, and we pasted in this settings here. So the pipeline is the confidence threshold is 0 0.5, the detector name is Elf Model Kev. Uh, and we, the type of um, ob model we're using is a detection. And the source is the camera, which is the camera module above. We also added in um, a couple of services. So the first one is the data management service. This will do the synchronization of all the files between the cloud service and the robot and vice versa. So that um, squiggle VM capture is where it will capture all the, the images from the robot and then 
it stages them to be synchronized and the synchronization is on and there's a small cost associated with that but it's it's so minimal um you don't need to worry about it and a lot of if you've not put any <clears throat> payment details in there obviously you, you can't get charged for that we then added in a deployment um service and this enables us to deploy that machine learning model that we're going to create from all those captured images onto our robot the name of that service is defined by the name of the the training model when we created it so it can just deploy it automatically <laughs> as if like no issues at all and then we've got this um, vision machine learning model component which is the machine learning model and we call that one elf detector so then when we go to our control which is our remote control we can then see that there's these extra we've got our regular camera one but we've also got this camera transform and this is where it does the detection of the elves it's kind of failing at the moment to detect any elves whatsoever because we haven't given it anywhere near enough images to do that but this is the process by which you can do that so what we would need to do to uh, to make this work like effectively or work at all um, is basically go back into our camera config and just do a whole bunch more um, capturing of images and then also back in our data sets we, we basically need to go back in here and we need to do some more tagging of with our bounding boxes we need to make sure every single one of these has got a bounding box in it um, and that they're the ones that we've already set we can look at the entire image array so there's lots of them here for example we haven't drawn bounding boxes around so we could just add that one in for example like so so we can just grab that and that's what we would need to do um, to make this work once we've got this, well, this is interesting they've got this run model button here we can select if there's a classification one we could run that there but we haven't got that one uh, set up and then once we've um, we've added a lot more images to that rather than just the poultry 14 we could just run train model again on our object detection elf and give it a name so we could call this one um, elf model 4 for example and train so there we go it's now going to train that one with that extra image on there uh, it doesn't tell us how long that one actually took to do it'd be nice if there was a, a column there that tells you how long the previous models took to run just so you've got an idea uh, how long to wait but it was just over six minutes i think on that particular one so yeah that's how we build with vm and my mess up because i hadn't uh, included that extra vision service on there my notes there so i'll make a note to do that uh, and that's why i kind of wasted a bit of time on that one but yeah that's how we build it and then we can go back into our rover back onto our control tab and we can then see what the robot can see with our camera and our transform it'd be nice if it just do it, did it once just to sort of show that it does actually work um, but i guess i just hadn't unless there's actually any, a problem with the the training service i'm assuming everything's sort of working correctly there but yeah if we get our if we get it to do that and at the, at the right angle because we clearly need to take lots and lots of pictures but the tacking them is pretty quick i could do that to probably about half an hour and i like the way that you can capture all the images in a single session you can just do it very quickly just with that um, capturing service enabled and then you just disable it once you've finished doing that if you run it all the time you basically just run out of space on your cloud service so yeah that's how we do that okay let's get back over to our our notes i think that's almost everything i've got for you today so yes um, if you want to support the channel you can do this in a number of different ways you can go to kezrobots.com slash coffee uh, you can join the youtube membership program just by clicking the join button underneath the main player you can a super thanks or a super chat depending if you're watching this live or on replay so make sure i've got those buttons enabled on there which i think i have there we go if i just click that so yes if anybody does any super chats or anything like that they'll appear on screen now uh, and yeah that's um I think how we we do that so there's a couple of people i want to sort of give a nice shout out to people who have supported the channel so thank you so much roland for those coffees that you bought um so he said thanks for doing the videos all this year and all the uh, the different projects thank you so much for supporting the channel it means i can buy more stuff uh, to show you guys as well and thanks to gunther as well um for supporting the, the channel through the coffees and uh, we've got a couple of other people there as well who've also bought some coffees and on the buy me a coffee membership we've got uh, mary louise mayer we have jeff johnson 
Dean Corti, Marlene Brent, Tom Shemmy and Steve Phillips. And on the YouTube membership side, we have uh, Alistair Ware, John Paul Jolly. We've got Cassie. We've got Dale from Hybrid Robotics. Hey, Dale. We have uh, Tinkering um, Rocks. We have JDM, Johnny Bates, Bill Hoy, Oxfad39, Cheerlights. We've got Hands from Cheerlights, Michael. And of course, we have Tom. So thank you guys for supporting, guys and girls, for supporting the show. It really helps me uh, uh, carry this channel on. So yes, it's make sure you subscribe that's everything i've got for you today on there so at this point in the video if you're watching this on replay because you'll be missing out on all the other stuff we'll talk about after this i'll say thank you so much for watching and i shall see you next time and i'll just click on the uh, little button there to add the stream marker and we'll have a quick look through what people have been talking about <laughs> you notice alex's uh <laughs> christmas hat just there <laughs> so neversink has got his um andre you've got your Five, Raspberry Pi 5 finally, fantastic. So Adam says, one advent calendar finished filming, so now I move on to the Pi, Pi Hut advent calendar. Awesome. I think I caught one of your videos. Uh, I did find that one online. They're not being pushed out. I do subscribe to your channel, but I don't get to see them. I don't know why that is. Sometimes the algorithm doesn't work the way that I expect it to. Uh, <laughs> I want a cup of water like that one. It's just a massive... <laughs> it's got a nice like metal <coughs> straw as well. <coughs> And uh, you can use it as like a thermos flask as well as a. Yeah, look at the size of that. It's just absolutely gigantic. Really nice quality. Pick it up. There you go. So all metal inside, like a thermos. So, yeah. I think Alex has called dibs on that one. So that's been. Uh, we've got this pack of stuff from PCB Way. So they gave us that. It's a nice big um, PCB Way cushion. I was saying at the uh, beginning, Merry Christmas 2024. I think technically we would call this in the UK 2023 because we're still in 2023 when the Christmas happens. It's the week after it becomes 2024. We kind of understand where they're coming from with that. I did like that. Um, it's a whole bunch of stuff, actually. <laughs> they, they supplied. So there's a mouse pad and wrist rest with all the uh, PCB way theming on there. Bunch of lanyards, these are different lanyards, which is nice. There's a nice neck cushion. I do like the uh, do like the way that this is sort of put together, so you can undo that and then pop these back in. And obviously, if you're travelling on a plane or something like that, you can use this to sort of fall asleep. It's got all the nice uh, PCB way branding on it there as well. It's pretty neat. So I like that one. That'll be going on. When we go to open source next year, I think I'll be taking that on the plane with me. What else have we got on here? A whole bunch of stickers as well, which they've provided. So they're going on the sticker wall. So the sticker wall, if I go to that camera there, let's tilt it up. You can just see over there. That's the, uh, the sticker wall. That's where I put all my stickers. So they're going to go on there in a minute. You can see my drink there. Spun the camera around the rest of the room. <laughs> What's that you mean? Do you want to spun the camera around? I don't. The rest of no, I'm okay not to do that. Um, what else? Is oh yes. And they, they gave a whole bunch of these um, amazing PCBs that've been created. So this one, you can see there, has got some lights on it. It's a little tree. I'm gonna hold it up there. It kind of gets a bit washed out by the main camera. There's a big light there that's pointing at me. You can see there. They just run off a, a single coin cell battery and they've even got like a, a on off switch on some of these which is pretty neat it's this one you can't even see the processor on this there must be a processor on there but it's so small that you can't actually see it which is pretty neat so there's an on off button the coin cell it says they're designed by is that a carry sun and there's the back of the uh pcb ways it's all these different leds on there and just see it flashing away so they're quite nice and they've got a little place to sort of dangle this from your tree and this one's even got an on off button which is pretty neat i think there was two of those yes there's like another one in there as well so i've opened up but yeah they sent four of these little pcbs which is really cute so they're going on our tree for definite and yeah just runs on a single um coin cell battery these are just a uh, CR2032s, I think. So yeah, pretty neat. I like those. 
like those a lot. So that was the, uh, the, the, the pack that we got from uh, PCB Way. Um, we've had some other things this week as well. One of them is all the product um, production ready Yukon stuff. So all the uh, whole pack of the make anything kit. So thanks Chris for sending that through. Can't wait to, to build more stuff with the um, with the Yukon. So that uh, Omnibot behind me, that has the, the uh, pre-production board in there and uh, that's working pretty sweet. I've got the LED strip in there, the motor, the dual motor controller, and what's the other one, the audio amp as well for the speaker. So that works really, really nicely. Uh, and I did find this, I've not actually plugged this in and done anything with it yet, but I did get one of these um, Photon 2 little boards as well. So there's a little microcontroller. I'm not sure what you can do with these that's uh, really cool, but I did see them. I did buy one. It's got an antenna connector on there as well. As a, I think that's a battery connector. I'm not sure what that other, other connector is on there, but yeah, micro USB-C as well. But yeah, Photon 2 particle photon not sure not sure what i can do with that well i'll have a look <laughs> cool so let's have a quick look and see what other comments people have made on here so uh steve says uh hello how's it going from north carolina <laughs> tim says merch i got my six-year-old <laughs> all i get for my six-year-old daughter is when will the octopus start <laughs> doing a large toy as merch octopus when will the octopus start doing a large what's the octopus is that like octoprint or I'm not sure what that could be actually <laughs> we could make an octopus plushie maybe that'd be quite cool <laughs> let's add a frame floor to the to burn the elf so we did wonder about how you could we, we could make some kind of nerf gun that you could control on like a pan and tilt thing um maybe we should build that for next week <laughs> we did used to have like a whole thing didn't we alex like uh all the nerf stuff we had loads of nerf guns and Remember. I, don't know where that went. I don't know where that went either, but it's about somewhere. It's probably in the loft, isn't it? Uh, so, yes. So, Neversync says there's an advent of code. Somebody should do um, an advent of robots. So, I did think about that. One of the projects I created and then... Um, so, I made the system to publish pages every day, uh, depending on what the calendar date was. Um, and... I created some content for this and never actually pushed it out so it was all going to be 3d based so every day there'd be like a new advent calendar page um, and there would be like a, a small model that you could then 3d print out and then eventually build it into some kind of robot i'll have to look at that it doesn't have to be festive it could be just a, a day of code or a day of 3d printing something like that somebody was thinking rocket launcher this place is flammable <laughs> We do have a smoke detector, but yeah, we, we, we can't be using weapons like that. I'm sure my channel will be taken down if we start building things like that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, wait, she's older, she's, she, and she was getting to asked to pay for things. Wait till she's older and starts getting you asked to pay for things for her. Fair enough. So not to be confused with the elf hardware files. So that was the thing I, on one of the, the teasers I did for this, I said, um, this elf on the shelf detector, um, runs elf binaries so I'm, I'm liking what you're thinking there adam we're on the same page so elf is a, a file format isn't it for linux unix um so image training guides are on my 2024 to-do list for m5 stack awesome it's it's one of those things that it is actually conceptually easy to do um even though i had those little issues because i missed out a step on my uh, instruction i'd spent so much time building that as well i just missed off that one thing which i I absolutely need to add uh, I need to make sure I don't forget that as well um, but yes I'll, I should remember that so I'm going to build so Adam says I'm going to build an automation device and guide before making the image guide um, as I have an arena that the robots will be in that's pretty awesome cool so David says my plan is to build a Python price watch um, it'll need an AI because the price of the product can be on, on another place as the day before no idea how to package and use this and how to start yeah so you'll need some kind of database to to stuff these prices too you could use something like redis which is like a really easy to set up and use database you'd use um sql Lite if you just want to store it locally that'd be easier to do and then you need some way of just comparing what the price was and have a price up price down price the same indicator i guess um, so yeah so Adam says, uh, depending on the source, you could bypass the image and um, and query the JSON for the price. 
So I think my brother built something like that for Yahoo. He had like a fantasy um, stock. Um, what's it called? Stock exchange list of things that he wanted to track. And he basically just query the Yahoo um, price tracker and then put that in a database and just compare it from the, the previous day. So there we go. Stan says, I like the rover. Might have to ask Santa for one. They are nice. It's a nicely built robot. I love the, it's very well finished, the sort of metal on it. Um, nice and smooth. Everything just works. Yet the components on it, very, very simple. You know, if you if I take the lid off and look inside, they're, uh, they're very, very simple. Just straight into the Raspberry Pi GPIO. No like complexity or anything. Uh, but it's a configuration that they've clearly tested and uh, works just well. But that, we can remotely control it from the web page. That's nice. Uh, and you can add that to anything. So this little QB robot here, I've been adding VM to this to get this up and running. Uh, and that's where I was having issues with the camera because this has got the latest uh, auto focusing version three camera module, but it has got a LiDAR on the top as well, which would be pretty cool for doing some slam. So that's what we're looking at next with VM is um, how to make my VM robot have um, some simultaneous localization and mapping. So that'd be pretty cool. Santa's bought me the Elgu Conqueror tank kit. Awesome. I've got another robot en route um, to me very soon, actually. Um, so I'll be sharing that once that one arrives. But it's uh, another robot kit, which is uh, pretty I think it's Arduino based as well, actually. So, yeah, very nice, Adam. So anyone with Pi 5, the new board isn't fully supported on VM yet. Um, so it is supported. Oh. Maybe they, they don't say, that because I was looking at the same conversation that he was having there, Dan. It does work, I should say. It might not be supported yet, but it does actually work. So I have had VM running on the Raspberry Pi 5. What isn't supported is the camera modules. I know that there's a, there's a lot of backwards and forwards about the camera modules. Uh, so, and there's about three different types of camera mod you can add in there. Um, so it'd be nice if that complexity just wasn't there. And it's to do with the fact that um, Bookworm <coughs> changes the camera library again so it went from was it the uh, pi camera pi camera 2 lib camera lib camera 2 and all that means that uh, it's not been particularly stable so it's just one of those things and then vm have to create all the libraries for all the different possible supported platforms and then make it easy to use <laughs> so alex back in the dutch <laughs> You don't speak any no. <laughs> any Deutsch, any German. <laughs> no, we, we've been learning some language. We've got Duolingo, so I've been learning some Italian, but um, it's not very good at the moment. I had a 91 day streak and then I, I didn't do it for a week and I've lost that now. So that's sad. <laughs> Almost made it to 100. Almost made it to 100. That's amazing. I'm trying to have a guess at what that means, but uh, I'm not very good. German's quite a nice language to learn as well. It's very um, structured, isn't it? English is just like a hodgepodge of lots of other people's languages. It's got lots of like Gaelic French in there, all kinds of stuff. So yeah, studied German some 18 years ago. You cool. Just turned into a language lesson when you failing. <laughs> I'm not saying how long I studied for German as I'm ignoring my age. So I don't think it's a place we judge you for your age. Oh, this is very true. Um, so technical issues on the stream we, we have robot issues hopefully kevin can fix it so we kind of fix it but I'm, I'm not satisfied that we got the robot detecting the elf properly it should have that uh, bounding box around it and it hasn't which is a bit irritating i'm basically just having a look at it again to see if i can make it do it i think i just need to, to add a lot more um training samples in that but i've also got a sneaky submission that something might be going on at vm why did it fail to twice to build that suggests there's something wrong with their build process to me. Uh, so, yeah, Dan says a lot of effort has gone into this live stream. So we appreciate it all. Thank you. I, I do appreciate you noting that because, I, yeah, I basically just spend all week and uh, every day after work and then every every day of the weekend putting all the stuff together. So. To be continued. So let's see what else people are talking about. So, <laughs> the elf is evil. That's it. I think the elf jinxed it. I think you've you've nailed it there, Adam. Um, so, what service is that? So, we're looking at um, VM today. <laughs> you need a digital Jesuit priest to exercise the computer before after this. Digital G 
Jesuit priests do actually exist. Is that so, Adam? That is pretty interesting. They have ordained priests that work in the Vatican IT department. Interesting. Yep, so we did try restarting the service. I basically just missed out the vision service. Uh, and Steve had spotted that there. Is the elf model not defined as type equals vision service? So yeah, we were just missing that uh, that one extra service that I've not put in my notes. Which is a bit frustrating. But the good thing is we we learn something by doing that. So you either you either win or you learn. That's the thing, isn't it? Uh, so yes. There we go. Dan's clapping hands there as well. Cool, cool. So that's strange. Did you make sure all the messages is selected as they go out daily? What's that? Did you make sure all the messages is selected as they go out daily? Nope. Flashing of LEDs. Someone needed to fit a robotic arm into San and Alex's Santa hat so it sticks up and moves about. <laughs> all right. That'd be quite cool. We could do that. Um, so, so there's a question there. So what do you actually want to what do you actually do and what is your next big project in terms of robots? What do I actually do? So I'm a freelance project manager by day and for my hobby I make robots and I make videos about how to build robots and bring them to life with code for YouTube and also on kezrobots.com which is just here. So you can check out all the, the robots that we built to date. If you want to have some ideas of things to uh, to build yourself, I put like an ideas page together. So if you've got like a Raspberry Pi and you, you want some ideas of what you could build with that, so you can click on the Raspberry Pi link and you can see all the different things, including the elf detector. That was quite a cool one I looked at during the week, which is um, how to take a 3D model, particularly like a low poly model, and make it into a paper craft. So there's some really nice software for Windows and Mac for doing this, two different companies. Um, and yeah, you can basically just download that's the Archie model and you can print it out. You can see the software that has like a, the model and the, the generated output and you can basically just print it out to your Cricut device or you can just hand cut it out and there's the Archie 3D printed papercraft model you can download as well. Hmm? Yeah, I've not actually put it together yet. It's still uh, all over the place, but yeah, there's the, the PDF. You can download it and build your own archie so yeah that's that's that cool i think we've uh, we've gone a bit over time there today probably because of the the little issues that we were having with our with our robot detecting the elf still not happy with that but we, we've got the actual model working you just can't see the output of it working very well and i basically just need to train the model up a bit more i'll probably record a little video clip and put it on social media did that first slightly detect them didn't see that maybe it's just me moving my thumb out of the way mm. anyways um there's nothing else on that i need to actually configure instead but really frustrated if i look down this like a, oh yeah draw a bounding box around it or something that'd be pretty irritating if that actually was just on there no it doesn't look like it looks like that is all good to go cool cool so, so at this point in the video, I'll say goodbye to you guys as well, because I think we're, we're at time now. So thanks so much for watching, and I shall see you all next time. Bye for now.